Hello everyone, it's a new month, so we've got SEO news for you. Not to mention we've got our employee handbooks. Why? Because there's an interesting story about TikTok and Apple and a little uh, ticking off an Apple employee, so to speak. We also have news of Columbus being the next Silicon Valley. YouTube not wanting to lose their shorts this time, as well as how to get explosive social growth and a spooky data center story. Here we go. Alright everyone, here we are. Thank you for joining us. So let's dive right in. It looks like Columbus is poised to be the next Silicon Valley. There have been stories as of January and beyond, but why? Because of the massive investment that's been going on right now in Columbus, Ohio for most all of the major tech, com tech companies. I'm talking about Intel, Facebook, Amazon, all the big names, Google of course, investing in data centers in Columbus, Ohio. Now we know about the CHIPS Act. The CHIPS Act was recently passed July 27th. Uh, we have a note from Sherrod Brown, Center of Ohio, that says he's proud that the CHIPS Act has passed as a historic act funding for semiconductor manufacturing. Now what does this mean? It means that Intel is basically going to f uh, create their facility and they're going to do that uh, as of 2025 basically announced a 20 billion dollar investment in a semiconductor uh, facility creating 10,000 jobs in New Albany, Ohio just outside of Columbus. Now on top of that we have lots of data centers that have been that have been created all over the place in Ohio as well right around Columbus. It's absolutely um, staggering and amazing the the level of investment. I'm talking Intel's announcement to invest 50 million dollars in higher education and then obviously billions of dollars beyond that. Now we also have data centers from Amazon. All those are coming up. Now what's also interesting is uh, Google has announced a region in Columbus, Ohio. Now this is uh, pretty important as well because it just means significant investment happening in the uh, as a cloud region cloud regions are additional or more services that happen in the uh, Columbus Ohio area and uh, right now it looks like uh, the internet is slow but here we are a Google Cloud region is now available in Columbus Ohio data center help provide 12.85 billion of economic activity um, for the regions quite amazing um, and Buckeye State being one of them right here it's US East 5, which provides speed and availability and along with some of their top cloud services. So this is a big deal along with the other notes from, uh, from Google. Um, in the next five years, yeah, it's going to be a major tech sector. It's going to be a major tech hub. Uh, Google is, I mean, all these companies are definitely investing a lot in Columbus right here. Pretty amazing. All right, next story, we will be following that, of course. Next story is GA4 is coming hard now. GA4, all hands on deck, running 2023 uh, July. There will no longer be universal analytics. Um, things are going to change, basically, so there will no longer be universal analytics July of 2023. Google has made it a point that, basically, they will not stop calling you and they will not stop bothering you unless you have GA4 implemented. So I myself, like last week, we got tons of calls from Google saying, are you on GA4 with these different accounts? It's been quite, quite amazing uh, how aggressive, I guess, they've been on this. So they've made it a top priority finally to get GA4, make sure that GA4 is actually working and on all these accounts. The next one is YouTube is taking YouTube shorts seriously. They don't want to lose their shorts in the sense that Google Plus was a big failure overall for them. Uh, what happened was Google Plus, big issue long, uh, they were trying to basically catch up with Facebook and they did it six years too late and it was an inferior product. Well right now, they're actually recognizing the success of TikTok and they're working to um, basically go faster and, and create uh, um, you know, growth by doing shorts. So the algorithms are really, really working to um, focus on shorts as a priority. The next story is about SEO is still popular lead gen source. Now this is something from the B2B podcast. Um, B2B podcast uh, reports that basically uh, SEO is a top lead gen source for a lot of their businesses still. 
Um, this is something where you hear a lot about uh, TikTok, Instagram, other social channels, LinkedIn, and others. But in terms of the actual top of top of level marketing, top of funnel activity, Google is still the main channel. Um, so regardless of all the hype and everything, it was an interesting podcast where they talked about actual real world examples where they're actually seeing a lot of growth. Now that's not to say certain businesses have certain channels that are number one over one or another. TikTok, others, you know, work for certain businesses, but we're not seeing across the board necessarily that that is, you know, the case. Now we have seen numbers go down over the last few years from Google being the only one because these new platforms have come about. That's natural. Um, but the kind of information here was that it's SEO is still one of the, well, basically it is the top source for top of funnel activity. Um, so yeah, more businesses are recognizing that, especially in what we're seeing is like recession-based uh, activity now. And they're kind of pulling back from core marketing activities in some ways. And they're focusing on what's working. And what's working is SEO. What's maybe working is Google Ads, the top of funnel activities. And they're adjusting strategies a little bit away from maybe digital marketing of like social strategies and stuff like that. Um, because it is pretty expensive. It takes a lot of time, makes sense. Um, it's still very important. It still needs to be done, um, obviously, but in terms of business growth, it was an interesting, interesting podcast nonetheless. Okay, how to get explosive growth on your platform. So I wanna talk a little bit about the success that we've had, which has been um, uh, very good, very positive in terms of the social media channels that we've been um, testing. And over the last month, we were actually testing a couple of different channels um, and we saw some impressive, impressive growth. And I'm going to actually show this in a moment here. Um, basically, the results were very impressive uh, for um, some of these channels. So right here we can see what we did was we started doing videos. We started doing videos way more often and posting them on TikTok and Instagram Reels. Since then, we've seen across our social accounts, we've seen 11,000% increase in <laughs> accounts reached and accounts engaged a 1,000% increase. Um, and then accounts reached from more recently of last month in August a thousand percent increase and 200 percent increase in engagement absolutely insane when we're posting we thought the we thought this would be the case we were kind of mesmerized by posting videos consistently we were able to get eleven thousand percent increase in growth that's insane insane check out the website for more information on that but absolutely amazing results um the next next uh port, port the next story here is a Google new core update hit. Uh, this is from Search Engine Journal. A new core update has landed, which is the uh, helpful content update. The helpful content update is um, basically focused on AI created content and it's designed to better focus on the actual human factor of humans creating content, not AI driven content where there might be bot farms and, and link building farms and other things that are just like spitting out content. This is really focused on uh, penalizing those and focusing on human factor. Now, we use white hat tried and true SEO techniques. We don't like farm out the stuff. We write the articles or we have very close partners that write anything. Um, and so we've seen uh, gains of 7% across our, our um, some of our clients basically with this update and we haven't really done anything we just saw an increase a boost so they were favoring that content more so pretty interesting stuff there um, on the SEO news, SEO news side continued we have some other stories here um, about uh, Google Data Center snake oil uh, a snake oil farm it's a crazy story it's a little spooky it's a little weird I, uh, I don't have my spooky music, but uh, basically what happened was the Google Data Center broke ground and they started, the, the story is really interesting, do check it out. Um, it was a farm that was a snake oil farm initially and it was uh, 
the Columbus Dispatch reports that uh, they were planning to break ground in June. The facility is built on a former snake oil farm, Hartman's Farm, once the largest operating farm in the U.S., where Samuel B. Hartman grew grapes for his miracle cure known as Peruna during the 1800s and 1900s, early 1900s. It was also used as a dairy farm, and Native American burial mounds have also been discovered on the site. Pretty weird, but that's where Google's going uh, for their cloud region stuff. So, if anything funky happens with the cloud region, you know why. <laughs> Pretty weird. Um, another story about Meta is expanding into New Albany as well. Again, continuing that with the Silicon Valley aspect. You have the Google Data Center and then you have Meta. Now, mind you, there was like a billion dollar investment and only 20 jobs were created for those, which is hilarious. It's a data center, so there's hardly any people in there. Only 20 people. It's, that's nuts. Uh, but in the Intel side, they're creating many jobs because it's a fabrication uh, center. So they'll actually be making chips. Tons and tons of microchips. Intel chips and stuff. Um, Meta to expand new Albany, Ohio data center campus. They're adding uh, two buildings totaling a million square feet in New Albany. Check out that story. It's got really neat pictures of the new facility. Uh, it's a large expansion uh, and uh, pretty interesting uh, stuff that they're, uh, that they're doing there. Next story is Amazon Web Services. Not to be outdone. Amazon is also creating a third data center in Hilliard, Ohio. So, um, again, that data center is happening in New Albany. Or no, I'm sorry, Hilliard. Um, and basically, uh, you know, they've been constructing it near I-270. And you can check out that story. Uh, they bought the plot for $14 million And construction was set in late 2021. But there was a delay because the city had infrastructure, um, get infrastructure there. Speaking of which, with the infrastructure story, I cover this in a podcast. If you are interested, you can check out the link for the podcast that kind of goes into more detail, tells the spooky story, all that fun stuff. Columbus Tech Podcast. Just check that out. Um, it'll be on the website. So there is a lot of news and even more that I can hardly cover. One I did want to cover, though is about um, TikTok. There was a TikTok employee who was basically alleging that uh, she did a, a video that went viral. She has 500,000 followers. She's actually a comedian as well. So she kind of does you know, From this random stuff. emails, um, your phone is jailbroken and we're gonna clone everything. Hey, I can't tell you exactly how I know this information, but I can tell you that for the last six years, I've been a certified hardware engineer for a certain company that likes to talk a lot about fruit. So that's a big no-no in the employee handbook, basically, in Apple. Like, if you say, they don't want you to post and say, I work for Apple. She didn't technically say she works for Apple, but she did. And Google, or Apple has grounds to fire her, basically. So if she's not fired yet, she probably will be. Um, but it has been an interesting story. The story went viral, had 5 million views in 24 hours. And basically, she then did a response to Apple saying, don't fire me. <laughs> Which is silly, I guess. Um, more than likely, she'll get fired. I mean, it's it's in an employee handbook, and it's most all these have what's called employee at will employment, meaning that they can fire a person for any reason, usually performance or whatever. And it's hard to prove. Uh, my my uh, my dad actually worked for OSHA, and because and he would tell me he actually told me that uh, it was hard to cite anyone whether they were racist or if there was anything bad and not, I'm, this is a separate story I'm not saying Apple is at all but basically if anyone was racist when he was working years ago for OSHA they couldn't actually claim that because they'd say their perf work performance was poor but they would say often it was because they were a certain race that they got fired um, which is very sad but um, because it's at will employment in these states and Ohio is one of them they can they can fire them just just as they wish um so good or bad that's how it is i'd love your opinion on this throw it in the comments let me know going back to this um that basically covers the 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 news there there's a big 
big news though um, about Google actually um, but I do want to mention the pro tip the pro tip is back to drive massive growth and reach on Instagram with video doing more videos and watch your growth grow exponentially being consistent is key and then you can check out the pics I did forget the breaking news intro All right, we've got breaking news. It's a big story, actually, from Google. Um, so this is from the Therat report. Um, Google is actually going to be in an antitrust suit against Google Ads by the DOJ. Now, they were also, um, the same thing happened in October of 2020, I believe, was an antitrust as well. Um, it happens they do get sued it does happen it has happened before but it is something that we definitely want to watch it's being sued over violating antitrust laws with its search engine um, advertising technologies help websites and apps fund their content they enable small business to reach customers around the world the enormous competition in online advertising has made online ads more relevant so this basically would be if it actually goes through it would be a big change it would make it so that Google would not be able to allow the bids, like control the bids from Google Ads. So that would be dependent on everyone else. Everyone would bid, and then um, that would be like kind of a third party, like Bing could bid, or like all these other companies could bid, and it wouldn't just all be controlled by Google. So they're alleging that because they control that and the bidding structure, um, you know, it's, it's a violation, basically. So that is a big story. That's a really big story, and we will absolutely cover that. Um, you know, because Google has made $53 billion, 81% uh, of Google revenues do, do come from advertising. That's how it works. So, we will absolutely be following this story in the future. All right, everyone, thanks for watching. So, now we have some stories. Um, we're going to switch gears, we're going to do a chill, we're going to power down. I'm do a chill thing. Here's some cows for in between. So hopefully that switched things around. We got a little chill spot. And now what we're doing is um, focusing on the top client questions of the month. So we have five client questions this month that we're going to focus on. The first client question is... We have a bad review. How can we get it removed? So this one is uh, definitely tricky. Um, Google will not always um, remove reviews. Uh, it, you know, it really depends on on what your um, how you're doing this. So you do want to flag the review. That's basically most important. If it, it it's okay to respond to a review if you if you wish. Um, just make sure that you like if they weren't a customer then say that they weren't a customer we have no record of you this is a spam or whatever and then you can flag it that's your best chance to get the review removed however even so it's pretty hard to have a review removed if you've had any interaction with the client whatsoever Google will probably not remove it uh, I've seen certain cases where sometimes reviews are removed and some they're not and I think it has to do with the algorithm and certain factors that that person has. If they, um, you know, do a lot of reviews that are sketchy or whatever, they'll say, yeah, this person is not good and we will remove the review. They don't auto do it for some reason because maybe they actually have interacted with the business, but that's just how it is. So flag the review, get other people to flag it. Um, that's your best bet, really. Next, you do digital billboards. No, we don't. At this time, we do not. We focus on Google ads, online ads, all that stuff. Um, most of those are big companies, kind of like cable companies and how it's controlled. Um, and we just don't mess with that stuff. Uh, at least not right now. How can we get more reviews? So the best time to get reviews is at the end, uh, just before uh, c the customer journey, just, just before the end there. Uh, it means when you're finished with a project, ask when your customer says, thank you. That's the best time to say, can we have a review? It really helps out our business. 
and then send them an email. Be personal. Don't don't do a template. Just say, you know, be honest. Be personal, and say personable, personal, one of those, um, and just say, you know, it really helps our business. It gets us more. Um, it, it helps our SEO. It helps our business. Helps us get more, you know, business by you leaving a positive review and bonus points if you can say we're the best plumbers in Columbus or whatever your business is because those keywords help with Google. So a little pro tip there. Um, you know, there's a lot of ways. I mean, another way is to ask employees. Make sure employees are on the same board. Again, use your employee handbook. Uh, get employees on board to ask for reviews as well in the customer journey. That's really important. Finally, print reminders like business cards that employees can give your customer is a great one. And then emails uh, obviously work. Don't use canned responses. I didn't know you did social media. What's your social media service? So yes, we do social media. Um, we do social media uh, You know, work for clients. We've been doing that, uh, oh, I don't know how long. But uh, that is something that we help local clients with, with their social media, making sure they're posting every day if needed. Now, normally we do like two to, th two to three posts per week, but we do it on every channel. So every channel they need. Um, we also help them kind of devise a calendar, get on board where they need to be, all that good stuff. It starts at $3.99, very affordable for all the work that's being done. And, it, and it's, you know, social posts, images, all kinds of cool stuff. If you need help with video and stuff like that, there's other packages you can do. Again, video is explosive and definitely helps with your uh, with your um, growth. So do it. Okay. Um, but yes, we do. Is no, Last question. Is there a conversion delay in Google Ads? How long is it? This is a really good question. Um, conversion delays do happen, do happen basically 24 hours is the conversion delay. They do say technically it can happen up to 90 days, which is pretty crazy. Google ads says it can take longer, um, based on your conversion experience. So that's a long, long time, but basically, um, 24 hours, usually, um, conversions imported Google ad analytics, um, you know, within 12 hours generally. So it's not instant. It's not instant. It depends on your attribution model, all kinds of complicated things. Read the full detail on our website. We go into all that good stuff and you can uh, get a better picture, hopefully, of uh, how that works. But yes, there are data delays. Okay, so we have an amazing charity that I really um, encourage you to uh, focus on and very important to focus on this uh, charity. It's Thanksgiving time, believe it or not. They're already planning Thanksgiving to um, basically if you donate, you'll get, um, you can donate a certain number of dollars and that will be um, help with uh, meals. So number of meals that you, can, uh, that you can give to them. So for example, $50 about is meals for 23 people. This is a Columbus, Ohio charity that we work with. It's LSS Faith Mission. And we really recommend or, or hope that you join us in supporting them. Uh, yeah, so check them out. Um, but we, uh, we absolutely hope that you check out Faith Mission and donate if you can. All right. Next is the book launch. Jason Barger has his new book out, Breathing Oxygen. It debuted number one on Amazon in his section. It's a great book. Do check it out. Um, and I have it here. And I've been giving it out to people as well um, for... Uh, yeah, leave something in the comments. Maybe I'll, I'll give one out. So this is an awesome book. Uh, leave a comment that's like says breathing oxygen rocks or I want one or something. And, uh, you know, we can figure out how to, how to get, get you one. So it's a great book. Check it out. Go for it. <laughs> All right. Next is uh, memes. So we had tons of fun memes. Do check it out on our website always fun to check out these memes uh we we have a couple about social media posting and uh you know interesting stuff the us open was going on so there's that um but yeah always fun also another thing we're hiring we're hiring so if you have magic and you have the skills to work on our team we would love to hire you 
Um, we're looking for marketing managers right now, SEO reps, um, Google Ads experts. That's who we need. So if you know Google Ads, we need you. Um, if you're serious, apply because we want you. We want good people. And yeah, we would love to see you. So thanks everyone so much for watching. I hope that was helpful, uh, informational, insightful, all that good stuff. Um, if you have a comment, leave a comment. And be well, everyone. Goodbye. <laughs>